probably the windmill pump. I bet that's where I started. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Everything's a disaster. Uh, not really, kind of. I filmed a video yesterday morning while it was nice and cool out. I was watering plants, and I started off by just saying, hey, I'm bored. I'm spending three, four hours watering plants. So may as well film a video and talk about some stuff. And I did that, and now it's, it's gone. I can't find it. Well, the beginning of it is gone. I think that what happened is sometimes when this camera overheats, the file disappears. So I have to keep a watch on this thing and stop the recording before the little thermometer flashes. Anyways, what I was talking about was that I was walking around out here watering plants and thinking about what things are going to look like in a few months. That's just sort of the way my brain works when I'm thinking about fall planting and what I need to keep an eye out for, things I would like to do out here. And uh, then the thought of arrangement came to mind because you know, all these big tropical palms, they're going to be gone. And then the wheel started spinning into, it might be fun to talk about cold hardy, essentially house plants, house plants, container plants, things you can leave outside in zone six, maybe some for zone five and then seven for the bulk of the year. Not things to stay out all the year, unless you have a really mild winter, but the majority of it. So I know a lot of y'all are like me, where you have these house plants and you keep them inside, then it gets nice out. You scoot them out for their summer vacation, then it gets cold, you bring them back in. Then you're just left with this barren landscape, a barren patio or balcony, whatever you're doing, backyard. And it's nice to have some potted plants that can stay out for more of the year that look more appealing than say just like a holly or maybe an arb things that you more typically would see inside of a container that stays outside for the bulk of the year and i'm pretty sure i started off with palm trees and moved on to bamboo and some agaves and some party bromeliads so we'll get through all that but starting off one mill palm excellent potted palm tree they can stay out for the bulk of the year i only move mine in when it drops around 15 or so fahrenheit all the temperatures i'm going to refer to in this video are fahrenheit i'll put the usda map thing over here when i'm talking about a lot of the plants so you can get a gauge on temperatures but 15 is about where i leave this they're more cold hardy they can take colder temperatures but i'm going to be bumping the numbers up just to make sure there's some wiggle room because i'm talking about things in containers and my other videos where I've talked about cold hardy plants. I'm talking about things being in the ground, which adds a lot more protection. That's also a lot of plants that die down to the ground in the winter time. When it's in a pot, things are more exposed. So 15, that's generally when I decide that it's time to take this thing inside. And I would say last winter, it was only in for like, what, two weeks, maybe a month max. So get this one outside here in zone 6B, 7A for the bulk of the year. Chinese fan palm, nowhere near as hardy, but they can stay outside for a very long time too. My Chinese fan palm last year, it was nice and green until mid-January, up until we had that cold snap where it dropped to like negative 12, negative 10. It was below zero for about two weeks. Then it warmed back up, but that did it in. Up until that point, it did wonderfully. And typically we were having temperatures in the mid to upper 20s and then into the 40s. That's about what our winter is like here in St. Louis and it did well but that was in the ground so it had some protection and some sheltering and that's something to take into account with everything we're going to be talking about in this video is that there are you know some nuances you want to protect things from wind any succulents you want to protect them from moisture collecting in their crowns a lot of the plants i'm going to refer to them as being things you need to keep dry during the winter and i'm referring to keeping water out of the center of the plants or having a sopping wet root ball because those are all killers for a lot of these plants during the winter time yeah chinese fan palm they're pretty good. I debated putting needle palms on this list, but I don't know. For zone seven, absolutely. Zone six, eh, maybe. They're definitely cardi, cardi. They're definitely hardy into zone six, but they just grow like snails. So if you have a really bad snap and then you have dieback on it, it takes a few years to get them looking good again. So that's more of a, is the juice worth the squeeze? I protect mine during winter with frost bags and lights. In a container, they're going to be more susceptible to actually drying out too much because the needle palms are very susceptible to foliar burn, wind burn, the transpiration, right? It's just too much for them if you have a lot of the dry winter air. And then the butia, which I will be talking about later on in the video, pindu palm, talking about in a different sense that is. I have a little one over here. They're pretty good. I treat this same as windmill palm, 15 degrees, taken inside. If there's going to be any type of moisture that's going to be sitting on the plant, like freezing rain, snow, 
I have to look at the duration. That's something you have to keep in mind. So for a lot of these, if the snow is only going to be for like a day and it's going to be in the mid-20s and then warm back up, I don't really worry about it with things like the windmill palm or the pindu, the say, or not pind, yeah, yeah, pindu, butia. Whew, just lost my train of thought there. Mediterranean fan palms, I protect those. They are very, very, very susceptible to rot when your temperatures are bouncing around. But they're a good cold hardy palm. And then the the sables, sable miners, you can keep them in pots. You get a big bunch of leaves out of them. I don't know, I think they look better in the ground. For me, as far as container palms go, that can really take some cold. The windmill is always going to be the winner for me. The, they just, they look the best, I think. Chinese fan palm, they look great in a container. And again, these are plants where if it gets too cold, you might have to move them in. The longest I think I've ever had to have my windmill palm inside during the winter here in 6B, 7A was about two months. That's not all that long. That's not too bad. As far as the palms are concerned, there are a lot to choose from when it comes to cold hardy palm trees. If it's in a pot, you have more wiggle room with them, right? So you have the Jubia chilensis, which is an awesome palm. Even a lot of the date palms, pygmy date palms, as long as they don't get a lot of moisture on them, you can keep them outside to a good amount of cold. But I, I don't know, I have never pushed mine past the mid 20s. That's where I call it and I move them in. The parajubias, there are some nice ones to look at there. And there are lots of new hybrids and crosses and fun ones coming out. And some cold hardy smooth trunk palms too. The king palms, Archantrophoenix, mid 20s. So that's not as cold hardy and again want to protect them from moisture during the winter time that is ice snow that type of moisture but that is a nice alternative to things like these gossia palms over here my coconuts where they can't be outside at all when it's below like 35 those have to be inside really 40 is much safer with the coconut palms you get what i'm saying and uh oh yeah bamboo moving on from the palm trees let's talk about the bamboo lots to choose from they make great container plants you get a lot of years out of them. I only protect mine when it drops below 10. And uh, that's a pretty simple thing to do. I just put a big bag around them, have some heat cables that go around the pots, and that just keeps them looking nice. This is the yellow growth bamboo. They can take a lot of cold, but they will defoliate when it gets below 10 to 0 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why I tried this past winter covering them up and putting the heat cables on them. They soared through winter no problem. Came out looking great in the ground. I don't think there's anything I would have done for them. Uh, why did I, I don't know why I moved the camera over there. Yeah, bamboo. So many to choose from. As I mentioned, you got lots that look pretty exotic. You have some that stay smaller. There's some dwarf ones you can use to go around other plants. Maybe you have a holly or a juniper, even one of those fatsias in a pot you could have as a centerpiece with one of the dwarf more ground covery bamboos running around the sides, which might die back in the winter, but that's okay. They come back. They look great, have a nice exotic appeal to them. Do need to be repotted every few years or really pulled from their container, divided up. I usually only do it into thirds and then repotted, which is fun. You get more of them or you can give them away. It's nice to have things that are prolific, which is definitely something you get with bamboo. Mule palm. This is a cross between a queen palm, like this one right here, and a butia. Queen palms, they're somewhat cold hardy. Generally 9A, 9B and up is where you don't have to worry about them at all in winter. And if you're in zone 8, you can try them, but then you have a cold snap and then they die. I have had a lot of success keeping queen palms outside, but that's because over the years it's like they get used to having the cold dips and coming back up. But if you live someplace where that's not something that happens, I wouldn't recommend it. The coldest I've left a queen palm out in my backyard was probably 22 degrees, and it had no damage on it. I laid them down on their sides. It was, I think, a two-day cold spell, something like that. And then the pindu palm, or the butia palm, which is the other parent for the mule palm, really hardy. Good into, like, 10, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. They need to be protected from winter moisture. That's very important. And they aren't the fastest of growers, which is debatable. I actually feel like they grow fairly quickly when they're in the ground. In a pot, they grow like snails. Mule palm, they grow very quickly. They have almost the same cold hardiness as the Butia parentage, and they have a really fun exotic look to them. Kind of coconutty to an extent. They have the boots on the trunk, which come off over time. I leave these out usually to about 15 degrees. And that's when I bring them in, and again, just like with everything else, protect them from moisture during the cold spell. So no ice, no snow, I don't want any of that inside the crown of the plant. And otherwise, they're good out here. If we're going to have like a light breeze snow, I've let it just sit on them, and it's been fine. And sometimes can just lay them down on their sides. 
so that they have the protection from the ground, the ground emitting some warmth back up onto them. And then I'll just pop them back up. Usually I keep these outside for maybe eight to nine months out of the year. So you know, that's a big contrast to like the windmill palms where I can get 10 to 11 months. So these aren't quite as cold hardy, but you get the majority of the year of getting to have them outside. And I think that's well worth it. So having to move them in, even though they get pretty big and bulky, I think it's well worth it when you get such a very beautiful, exotic, appealing looking plant that you can have outside. And they're pretty drought tolerant too. This one's never been all that thirsty. Well, it is because I need to put it into a new potting mix, but up until it's potting mix got old and useless. Didn't have to water this one that much. Been a very reliable plant. Okay, the next one, I don't think, no, I don't have any anymore. Let's talk about this one under the shades. Maybe the camera won't overheat every three minutes. Agaves. Tons and tons and tons of agaves to choose from. They make great container plants. They come in different colors, shapes, sizes, and a huge variation in their cold hardiness too. So that's the first thing to pay attention to, and then you want to pay attention to the aesthetic of the plant. A lot of agaves you can keep into the ground in zone seven, no problem. In a container, there are several that you can do into zone five. Again, with everything else, if there's going to be moisture on them, then you want to move them inside when it's going to drop below, like I'd say 15, 10. This is very broad because there are so many different agaves with such various cold hardiness. The perii is usually one of the most hardy, the neo-mexicana or Neo-Mexica, I can't remember if that's the, what the proper name is on that one, but also very cold hardy. Hachensis is fairly cold hardy and has a really cool artichokey shape to it. There are tons. There's so many fun ones to choose from. I would recommend potting them up substantially bigger than the outer diameter of the rosette because once they reach a certain size, one, they tip over very easily, and two, it becomes very hard to move them. They can be very spiky and they'll, they'll get you. They're not something you want to have to stick your hands on. That's one of the reasons I don't have any big agaves anymore. I had a hachensis that went into bloom several years ago and then it died. When they flower, it's very impressive. They don't do it often. You know, some of them it takes 20, 30 years for them to flower huge like 15 foot telephone pole <laughs> looking stock on them and then they die when they're done flowering they put all that energy into flowering and then they die a lot of agaves will offshoot from the sides so you can just keep those and grow those on but there are some that don't so that's something else to look into when you're trying to pick one out <sighs> had to do another cool off with the fan thing just keeps overheating hey if you're into that rosette shape like you get with the agaves do you like bromeliads there's one back you can barely see it but bromeliads great plants Puyas. Paya. I've actually never heard a botanist say the name before. I've only ever read about them and seen them at nurseries, I think, twice ever. Had one for a brief period. They are a wonderful bromeliad-esque type plant. I actually think that they are a type of bromeliad. And they tend to be more cold hardy. Not going to be as cold hardy as like the bamboos and the yuccas that are over there. But they have a really exotic appeal to them. They put up a beautiful inflorescence, just like everything else. Keep them dry during the winter time. Protect from harsh winds, all that fun stuff. They should be good into the mid-20s Fahrenheit. Another plant that's not as cold hardy, but still has a nice appeal to it. Cordelin indivite, well actually Australia. So the spike plant. We see them at the nurseries all the time, sold as just a cheap filler, something you throw in the middle of the container. They're almost always labeled as Cordelin Indivisa or Dracaena Indivisa. So the Indivisa is a, a Cordelin that has a broader leaf to it and has a singular monopodial growth. They're not quite as cold tolerant as the Australis, which is what we have right here. So all those spike plants you see are actually Australis, not Indivisas. The difference there being, well, one, they look different. They come from different places. There might be some overlap in where they come from. I'm not quite sure. But the Australias will branch out, right? If you, that's very normal. They reach a certain size and they have lots and lots of heads on them. The Indivisa, think about that name, Indivisa, individual, just one. Should just have one growth on it, a broader leaf, and uh, they don't get quite as tall. Well, the Australias right here, these I generally leave out into the upper teens, so they can be outside the majority of the year. That's one of the reasons why I will, why I like to have them out here. So we have all these beautiful tropical plants out here, but a lot of them, they have to go inside or go off to a greenhouse in October. But the Indivisa and the bamboos, all these others, they can stay out here the majority of the year. And they have that nice monopodial growth. They'll flower once they reach a certain size. They have long sprays of flowers on them. 
and they're pretty low maintenance. When you have to move them in the house, they're very easy to take care of. They, uh, they well, it's the same thing as like growing a Drusina in the house. So you might get some brown tips. Spider mites might get on them. Generally, when I've had spider mites on these things. I can wash them off and name them. That's not normally a problem again. Whereas there are some other plants where once I get spider mites on them, it, it's just like goodbye. Don't want to deal with it ever again. Talking about use spathophyllum. Excellent option. The Australis. And they're cheap too, at least here in the US. I know a lot of people who are watching this might be in the UK, but here in the US, you can get them generally in a two to four inch container for like five bucks, if even. You throw them in the middle of the pot, plant a lot of flowers around it. Those annuals will die when things get colder, but you can leave that outside for much longer. If you're in zone 7B and up, I would just try putting them in the ground because they're pretty cold hardy. And when you have a cold snap that's really severe, they might die down to the ground but they come back up. So that can be a fun one in that regard. Another plant that's very similar in appearance to this cordelin right here would be the nolenas. The nolenas are actually more probably similar to the yucca over here, right there. They're a bear grass and they should be good 7A and up, so zero degrees and higher. Not an easy plant to get a hold of. I've never seen them for sale up here, but I have seen them as specimens at botanicals and at nurseries before where they belong to the owners. They weren't for sale, but the, basically the ones that I have seen, the I'll put up on the screen, the one I'm trying to think of right now, pretty cold tolerant, and they have a beautiful blue strappy leaf on them. They look like a uh, ponytail palm with blue foliage on it and that is a that's a wish list plant of mine I would love to get one of those because like I said you can leave it outside the majority of the year and they have that nice exotic appeal to them it's not something you see everywhere okay that's just what I got that I can ramble off the top of my head let me know if you want me to keep going with stuff like this because I can keep going and going and going with plants that are semi cold hardy tropicals plants you can leave outside most of the year but I think that was enough. It's been long enough and the camera keeps overheating. So comment down below. What are some of your favorites, some things that you have tried? Oh, I was going to mention Akuba, Akuba Japonica. That's another excellent option for containers. I, the freckles remind me of that. So Akuba Japonica has a similar shaped leaf to this right here. In fact, this leaf right here looks a lot like what you would see on a Japonica. I don't have any right now. That negative 12 did mine in last winter. That was too cold for them. I could have moved them in, but I didn't. They didn't make the cut. Other things were going on that were more pressing. But it really is, this is a fairly good representation. None of the colorful leaves, none of those, but just the green and yellow, the, I keep wanting to say freckles. This is the freckles. Mr. Goldstrike has a lot of color on it. There are tons of variegated options to choose from with them. And it's just a nice bushy shrub that a very similar appearance to this, but not all the color on them. With mine, I when I was moving them in, I moved them in when it dropped below 10. They're in a container, so it's just to be safe. Go ahead and move them in. I wanted to make sure to mention that one because those aren't ones that you can usually find as houseplants. You usually have to find them at your nurseries. So there's still a few months left where people might be able to pick them up and get them into a larger pot so have some time to root out and then get to enjoy them on your patio, balcony, deck, whatever you have for a few months for the bulk of the year. And you have a few cold days, you move them in, you pop them back outside, no big deal. They do great in the house too. Gosh, I can feel that this thing's going to overheat any second now. Okay, comment down below. Let me know what you got going on in your garden. Some great options for cold hardy tropicals or just say hi. I love talking to y'all. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody rushing through this outro. It's going to overheat any second. Keep on growing. Bye.